Hello everyone and welcome to today's Trump webinar on TrueDops Boost with the exciting subject of preparation of 2D data. So this half hour webinar focuses on the current workflow for DXF file preparation. Our cutting customers receive often parts in very diverse formats such as IGES, DXF, STEP, EWG, Parasolid and so on. But the problem with all of these models from so many different systems is that it is simply impossible to manufacture with them. Using a few examples, you find out how TrueTops Boost offers every innovative sheet metal processor all of the programming tools that he needs to work quickly and efficiently and in so doing enables him to get the job done cheaply. So we are going to go ahead and get started. For listeners checking out TrueDops Boost for the first time, you might be wondering what TrueDops Boost is. How is it different from our previous programming system and other products which are out there? And that's exactly my goal of today's webinar, to show you our revolutionary new software and its immense added value through increased productivity. As you can see here, TrueDops Boost is divided into two zones, the in into two levels, the so-called home zone, which is basically our control level containing all the orders um, which we manage and you basically get uh, with one click on the boost button to the automatic calculation and therefore to your in C program. The second level is um, the tech zone containing all the technologies and our new 3D um, CAD system. So you can modify and interactively modify all the automatically prepared programs and do any changes either to your geometry or your to your technical solutions. And behind that of course is the new boost technology containing all the automatic processing and all the new software ar architecture. Just briefly for the workflow we first of all import geometry out of every geometry um, the program boost creates an, an order which um, you attribute and um, you add the part quantity and the customer information and um, many other attributes and after that third step would be creation of the unfolding if it's a 3D part and fourth step programming work step would be the parallel um, automatic creation of the bending program and of the cutting program. And the fifth step would be of course releasing the NC to the machine transfer folder. So what should you look for in a 3D system? Of course the simplicity in 2D, short learning curve, ability to process 2D legacy data, quick part and assembly modeling, associative 2D 3D detailing concept, a flexible 3D import export options and of course the technological consistency through the whole system without any breaks and interruptions within your workflow. So for the data preparation of 2D data first of all um, it's quite useful to activate a import dialog which will be appearing um, if every time you open a DXF file interactively. Of course you can switch it off um, after you have set your uh, standard settings, default settings, but in case you will want to change them you can either do it in the dialog, within the dialog or within the options panel in the design level. So the adaption of importing options. First of all, of course, uh, you are still familiar with the automatic um, contour preparation. And for example, if you want to treat colors uh, automatically and um, 
extract the geometry, you can use that um, automatic preparation. But of course, we have um, improved the whole import um, of 2D data. That's why we have implemented, for example, um, part thickening um, to a certain preset uh, thickness, sheet metal thickness. But of course, you can switch on and off the automatisms and um, that would basically, if you switched off, load all your the whole drawing sheet with all your dimensions, the um, frame, drawing frame, etc. Well, for my topics today, I would like to present you four major um, categories and um, basically go from uh, simple to more complex um, topics and that would contain pure cutting parts, cutting part with uh, interfering contours, such as, uh, for example, sinkholes or dimensions or anything other else. Then third topic would be um, the two import of 2D unfolding, which is there as um, DXF, um, meaning that we have to implement or insert bending lines and of course, with the correspondent um, deduction, the right deduction values. And, um, and the fourth topic would be importing of 3D bending parts, which are also there as DXF, meaning that there is a front view, side view, and top view. All right, let's get started. First of all, original TXF drawing and my first topic would be pure cutting parts. So what do we have to consider if we work with DXFs which are just have to be cut without any bending lines and so on? We have to um, be careful on the scale scaling and therefore we need to check the scale whether it's 1 to 2 or 1 to 5 and um, so on. Of course, um, open. We have to um, be careful with open geometry contours. But again, within the home zone, within our um, managing control level, um, boost warns us. If there are any open geometry, you get always a warning. If there is a problem, you get a warning. So um, our, the status concept, which is there, is very very helpful and shows you in detail where the um, origin of your problem is. All right, then of course, if there are um, threaded holes, we have to be careful and uh, I'll show you how we handle that in Boost. And of course, we need to answer the question whether it's a two, 2D or 3D drawing. If it's a 3D drawing, we have um, uh, to take yeah in consideration uh, whether we have to um, insert bending lines or correct the deduction values. You see here um, the user interface of the home zone. You're familiar with the um, division. On the left side, we have our categories and some filters. In the center, it's a um, list of our orders. And on the right side, the detailed view of e um, selected orders or nestings or single parts. So first of all, we're going to import um, some DXF and DWGs and I'll just select them all and import via um, a, a batch import. And just to mention, um, on the right side, you see all the supported 2D and 3D formats. And as you can see here in 2D sheet metal, it's um, of course our Geo, IGES or MI files. Other than that, there are 3D files and direct formats, which we all support. Those are basically all the um, major CAD formats. So if I open up um, the parts, I can, of course, um, filter to a certain name. Um, I just add a finish date to all the selected orders. Um, I add a quantity and a customer. All right, there are some warnings. Um, I will get to that to that warning later on. Um, first of all, 
I'd like to um, assign a material information. So my customer um, ordered uh, all the, those parts as um, stainless steel in uh, one mm. And of course, there's no bending machine, so I just deselect it and boost all those files. So there's no um, frame, there are no dimensions, there is nothing. So my customer is uh, clever enough to send me the prepared parts, which uh, don't need any preparation. So I just import them and I'm ready to go. Next step would be the creation of um, the nesting. So I click on create nesting and now I'd like to show you the warning which we had. Um, therefore, I just click on the order and I get back to my um, part. So we of course check uh, within Boost uh, whether a certain part is uh, exists already or not because uh, we don't um, want you of course to have double work and um, to prepare geometry um, if it exists for example if another colleague has made the job already um, you always see it actually and um, of course, what we have here is the same part you see within you see it with the within the dimensions and the surface, and it's basically compared um, to the with the technological data and not according to the name. So, but I want to use my drawing. That's why I click on ignore warning and go back to my job. And as you can see. My order list is uh, complete now without any uh, warnings. So I just select the, ma the machine um, technology profile or table is selected um, um, according to my favorite settings and I just select the raw sheet format and boost my nesting or sheet program. And um, right now in the background, um, my nesting profile is applied, um, the sheet gets nested, and technology um, is applied, and the in C code with the um, with the setup plan is generated. Of course, there might be some very small parts where roundings um, are too small. We just get a warning, um, but we can ignore it. So. Total scrap is 55% because of um, part distance is 10 mm, and uh, the parts are quite small, so that's a reasonable value. And processing time is there, recurrences uh, of the sheet, and I just release it. So we are done um, with that example. I go back to my um, order and um, I just filter um, for the warnings. Um, what I'd like to do is just to present you um, by numbers the examples. So two would be my um, second my second example containing um, cutting parts with interfering contours. So again, we should take care in the scale, open geometry contours, and so on. That would be another example with um, yeah interruptions or breaks, breakthroughs or um, any other symbols or threaded holes. Do we go um, into the system and check it there? So first of all, I would suggest that we create again a finish date. Um, quantity would be okay. Metalware as our customer and we set the material for all the um, example files I have um, selected and again I deselect my um, bending machine and boost the, um, my drawing sheets or um, the files. So I haven't selected the thickness because it differs of course and I need to check the drawing sheet or my file. So that's why I um, basically go from one to four um, and show you how we treat the different problems. 
So as you can see, there are um, quite a few interfering uh, contours. So I just switch off the automatic uh, contour preparation and also the automatic um, part thickening. And just click OK. So, so you can see there are um, yeah, a few things to be checked, um, as we said before. Um, 520 millimeters. So we just check the scale. Uh, I just hand say measure the uh, lines. So 50 should be that line. That's right. And maybe last check um, 30 mm. All right, we don't have the measurement for that, but 70 mm. So the scale is all right. The part thickness is um, 15 mm. So that's actually everything I need to know. And you see there's um yeah threaded hole and but what what we do is um as you can see the part is in um yeah purple and or magenta. Um I just would like to um prepare um the geometry by selecting the color, pressing control and um just deselecting everything else um, except my geometry and um, press Control C and Control V. So within the structure tree, it's quite easy to see what I have imported. Um, I'll just switch off my 2D import and I see my copied geometry. And um, if you switch it on and off, you see that the dimensions are equal to the original drawing. So um, I just um, delete the imported um, the imported drawing sheet. As uh, in the next step, I just press F for fill the part. And we remember if we use pool and the thickness was 15 mm, I type it in, press enter and delete the surface and the curve. And um, I convert the solid into a sheet metal part, validate everything, and you see that 15 mm is applied. And I just close the part and it's being saved back into the home zone. Well, design is all right. Um, I can proceed to the nesting with that part. All right, next example, um, quite similar. I just switch off the um, again part thickening and um, all right save it as uh, standard and what we see is that um, the drawing was again imported and what we do is again checking the part thickness and um, we just copy the things that we need. So again, I delete the original um, import and press F, um, pull the surface uh, to 10 mm, and delete the surface and the curve, and convert my part, validate, and close everything. And again, I'm done. And the design is uh, all right. And Let's see the next example. So contour preparation, as you can see, now the contour is uh, recognized and I can even try to thicken the part. I just hit OK and we see what happens. All right, the part was recognized. And um, of course, as you can see, the data is gone now. If you want to check what's uh, on the sheet, um, would be better to import the original file without preparation. But of course, um, as you probably have the drawing sheet before you um, in the paper form, you can easily check that. But I delete again all the unnecessary information. After we have cleaned up the geometry, um, it's also might be sometimes good uh, to check where the origin is. And as you can see, it's, um, it's a little bit off. And uh, in order to correct it, we just 
hit move we hit on the either component or the solid and um, click the corresponding um, arrow and say okay hit the ruler and the two directions so from X so it should be in both cases zero so we have moved it now into the center of um, our part but of course you can choose any other position so if you hit move um, select the whole component you'd like to change the origin on um, and then select your um, your um, three dimensions and move it accordingly all right we are finished with that part we have correct the size uh, the scale and um, even the position of the origin so last example of the um, interfering contour as you can see part uh, preparation doesn't help much and of course the, to thicken uh, the part won't help either but we, we just um, yeah open it and we can see again we check the uh, height so it would be 5 mm and there is a sinkhole two of them and even in the center so of course we need the inner circle um, of all the parts or all the holes so what we do is um, we need the original the original size so um, 795 of course if you have the drawing you have to check let's say it's 1000 uh, mm so what we do again um, in order to to clean it up we select our geometry um, again box select from the right so we don't need uh, those contours we don't need the outer contour here the same so that's why I deselected and again press um, control C and control V and um, so what we do next is um, if I measure for example the distance between those points is uh, 30 mm um, there is a quite uh, handy tool uh, within the repair uh, tab or 2D technology or 2D processing so um, curve gaps as you can see if we type in for example a maximum distance of uh, 0.1 mm there would be a few points so let's double click it might be yeah very small gaps in the curve so yeah you we can do it um, either uh, one by one or just hit the check mark um, all right but if we increase the maximum size let's say to 30 mm because we have measured it um, um, all right we have said that um, the whole part should be 1000 mm but before that I just um, thicken up to three millimeters so I just pull um, delete the surface and the curves um, go to sheet metal convert the whole part convert all right in order to extend that part to 1000 mm I just hit move select my um, right side we move it to the right side um, from that center point and that would be 1000 minus 25 minus 25 and that would be 950 obviously and we also move those holes so from that center point again and basically uh, it would be 500 minus 25 because of that um, left radius and again those three holes are moved now and we are ready we validate uh, the geometry close it and are finished 
All right, so as you can see, we have uh, treated uh, the second example, so um, four parts with uh, interfering contours, and um, you saw the different examples. So if I select my third example, there are a few parts, and again, I can use an existing um, example or just ignore the warning. Um, I just click on Use the part, and um, for the other ones, the same, all right, they are already in the system because I have um, imported them before. And again, I can um, batch um, ignore warning or just use the file. Just select one example. But basically, it's every, every time the same. Um, we can prepare, uh, thicken the part automatically, prepare the contour automatically, check whether there are blocks or not, and uh, click on OK. And you see it helps a lot actually to use the automatic preparation, because now the last step um, within my uh, preparation, it's a, basically it's a, um, it was a 2D bending part, right? So deduction values have been applied. We just don't don't know which ones, and we because we don't know the tools which have been uh, used for that. But um, I know that that part is one mm. That's why I choose the tool radius, and um, the die width would be let's say six mm. And you see out of the database, the bent allowance and deduction is um, drawn. And the last step would be just um, applying all the settings. And you see that the part um, has been prepared. So it should be all right. Um, let's say after val validating the part, um, there are no errors and no warnings. And we can now calculate the bending program. But basically what you do, if you have inserted uh, the bending lines, just check for your dimension, um, because you see we've got now the outer dimension of 96.6 mm, and maybe it should be 97 or even 100. Um, that's why you have basically to um, get your original drawing and um, create your original dimensions. And for that, you just again pull um, one side, choosing the um, ruler um, tool, um, set it to the opposite side, outer um, face, and type in your right dimension. So the part is now being corrected. Of course, you have to um, take into consideration um, maybe other contours, but let's say that was the only um, change I had to make. And um, in the last step, I would just save um, the part. Again, the unfolding is now created in the background, and I'm good to go for the automatic bend part calculation. But that will be done through within the home zone. Um, right now, I'm preparing the DXF, so the design and everything else is done automatically within the home zone. All right, and let's get, get um, to my last example. I just ignore the warning, I do it again. So I select my customer, select the finish date, let's say one week later. Um, I assign my material information, deselect my the bending machine, and um, well, for the thickness, um, I'm not sure what um, what thickness it will be, but uh, I'll see it, of course, out of the drawing. Um, as you can see, that's a 3D part consisting of uh, 3D, three um, views of the part. So the top view, side view, and the uh, front view. And what we do is we don't prepare the contour. We check, um, yeah, there are some dimensions saved within the block information. So if I import it, I see my dimensions. And again, um, I can easily 
check whether the scaling is the right. So 125, 125, and for example 40. So that should be alright. Um, I check whether no, it's not saved in a layer. But again, what I do is I um, select for the color and just deselect everything else I don't need. I copy everything. I delete the original one and um, I'm left with the three, three uh, views of the part. So again, w what we do is we fill and um, basically what we do is we um, interrupt or suspend sheet metal um, functions because we just want to um, create a 3D part out of it. So um, what I do is I use the tool guide that um, pulling to both sides and what I do is I just create a solid out of my original drawing. Um, that face I move by 90 degrees in order to pull it again into my um, existing solid on the left side. But what I do is um, it um, if I pull it without um, without selecting no merge, it would merge both solids, what I don't want at the moment. I select no merge and create another solid which just intersects the first one. Alright, um, basically that view I don't really need, uh, but we'll, we'll leave it um, for now. Um, but what you can see, we have now two solids, one surface and few curves and we have a very, very handy tool called Combine. And if we hit that, we um, don't want to keep cutter. But what I do is basically I select the solid which I'd like to cut. And that would be my original one, th the big one. And I select the other solids I don't need. And they are just being deleted and I'm left with the part I need in 3D. So as you have seen it's very very easy um, to convert a bending part which is there in uh, three views. At the last step I would um, just convert uh, the whole sheet metal part and as you can see the radius is um, not fitting but what I, I do is, um, again, I just hit the mouse button and the right uh, radius is applied according to my um, thickness. And in the last step, again, I validate. And within the validation, um, my tools are being set. And you see my upper and lower tool are set now. And I'm good to go for that part as well. So we've seen in that webinar how easy it is to to prepare DXFs, and I have skipped a few examples, but um, basically they are all the same. We have prepared um, around 50 parts, and we have created sheet um, layouts, and we have even converted a 3D bending part out of a DXF, and to sum it up, TrueDops Boost works as expected. Sketch on parts and pull or move to adjust the part. There are no CID restriction and uh, rebuild problems such as in other um, CAD systems or programs. TrueDops Boost works with any um, CAD geometry. There are no problems with CAD uh, incompatibility and the job is done faster than ever before. Don't hesitate to write um, a feedback to us, uh, just email in and um, just in preview for the next webinar topic, it will be text on design and the fastest way from solid to the unfold. And if you have any ideas, please write us, give us a uh, feedback and um, I'm looking forward for the next webinar and wish you a 
a good day. Goodbye.